guys, welcome! So far, we've explored all the Warlock, Royal Guard, Archbishop, Ranger, Shura, Shadow Chaser, Mechanic, and Runite skills. If you haven't seen my previous skills demos, I'll have the videos linked down below. This time, we'll focus our attention on the new Guillotine Cross skills. The Guillotine Cross are stealthy and deadly assassins. Their set of skills does not only make them lethal opponents, but also excellent infiltrators during the War of Imperium. In this video, I'll be featuring my guildmate Tanj as we explore all the guillotine cross skills and demonstrate each one in action. We'll take a look at the new poison-related skills like Poisonous Weapon and Poisonous Smoke, offensive skills like Cross Tripper Slasher and Dark Illusion, and all the other buff, passive, and defensive skills. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. Let's start with a set of skills which are based on the new poison which is a poison item exclusively used by the Guillotine Cross. Its effect is that it would bleed out targets faster, plus this cannot be cured by Panacea. Let's start with Poisonous Weapon. This is an active buff which applies a new poison on the weapon which increases attack by 10% for 150 seconds at skill level 10. Attacking with a poison weapon would have a 5% chance to inflict the enemy unit with new poison for 20 seconds. This can stack up to 3 times. This can coexist with Enchant Poison. Note that the new poison bleeds out the target faster, is lethal, and cannot be removed by Panacea. As we can see here, upon activating Poisonous Weapon, we have a chance to inflict the new poison on a target enemy. Up next for the poison-related skills, we have new Poison Research. This is a passive skill that increases the chance for Poisonous Weapon to inflict the new poison effect. This will also increase the new poison duration, as skill level 10 would have 10% increased chance and 10 seconds increased duration. Up next, we have Poisonous Smoke. This is an active skill which will spread a poisonous smoke while Poisonous Weapon is active. At skill level 10, enemies within range will take 430% attack damage and will have a 50% chance to be inflicted with new poison. This area of effect smoke will last for 20 seconds and up to 3 can be casted. Upon trying it out, we can see here that Tanch is able to cast up to 3 poisonous smokes. Kelsey's HP leeches quite fast as the damage is a combination of attack damage and new poison damage. This is an excellent War of the Imperium skill to disrupt enemy formation. At this point, let's take a look at the free runes catered towards enhancing the poison effects. First off, Poison Burst will reduce the healing effect of targets affected by the new poison. Each rune will reduce the healing received by 5%. There are three runes for this which would give a total of less 15% healing received. Note that we can have three stacks of new poison, thus with this rune activated we can have as much as less 45% healing received. Next, Toxic Spread would increase the duration of new poison by 2 seconds for each rune. There are 6 runes for this giving us a total of additional 12 seconds duration. Lastly, Poison Attack increases poison attack damage by 1% for each rune. There are three runes for this, giving us a total of 3% additional poison attack. Alright, lastly for the poison related skills, we have Antidote. This is an active skill which will remove the new poison effect from all party members within range. Upon trying it out, we can see here that Reese is able to remove the new poison status from Kelsey. In essence, only fellow Guillotine Cross can remove the new poison effect. Up next, we have a number of offensive skills, starting with Rolling Cutter. This is an offensive active skill that will deal physical attack damage to enemies within range. For each enemy hit, one rotation counter will be obtained, which can stack up to 10. Activating the Rolling Cutter Cut Cruise will boost Rolling Cutter's damage by each rotation counter. Each counter would increase the final damage by 1%. There are 5 runes for Rolling Cutter Cut which will stack the final damage output. Up next to supplement Rolling Cutter, we have Cross Ripper Slasher. This is an offensive skill that will consume all rotation counter gained from rolling cutter to deal physical attack damage to an enemy in the distance. At skill level 10, 710% attack damage will be dealt, and each rotation counter stack will increase the final damage by 20%. Because this skill is amplified by the rotation counter, this deals considerable burst damage, thus this mainly finds utility for MVP hunts. To demonstrate the impact of rotation counter stacks, here is the damage with a full rotation counter stack, and here is the damage without any rotation counter stack. We can see that there is a big difference in damage, thus we should be mindful of the stacks to maximize the effect. 
Note that this can be used in combination with poison casts, which should multiply poison damage by 100%. Activating the cross stripper slash the strong runes would add 3% to the final damage per point of rotation. There are 8 runes for this, giving us additional 24% to the final damage. Up next, we have Cross Impact. This is an active skill which will strike an enemy for 7 times, dealing 1.3 times sonic blow damage at skill level 5. The cross impact damage is based on your sonic blow level. Even with a max level cross impact, it will give minimum damage with a low level sonic blow. However, as we can see here, if we have a higher level sonic blow, we'd have higher damage. Sonic blow level 15 would deal 700% attack damage. If we add a cross impact multiplier, the damage will be further amplified. Up next, we have Dark Illusion. This is an active skill which will allow the Guillotine Cross to quickly approach the enemy while dealing attack damage with a percent chance to trigger Cross Impact. At skill level 5, we'd have a 70% chance to trigger Cross Impact. Alright, let's try it out. Here we have Maven standing at a distance from Tanch. However, with Dark Illusion, Tanch is able to quickly dash towards Maven, even inflicting a lethal blow. Again, from a different spot, Tanch is still able to dash in for the kill. This is honestly a very impressive skill and combined with a chance to trigger cross impact, this skill offers lethal mobility. This is a reason why long-range defenders should not stand in ledges during WoW, as these skeleton cross can use Dark Illusion to dash beside you and would allow them to possibly skip defenses during infiltration. As an added note, this can be used on the Imperium, but it would only be for mobility. It would not deal any damage. Activating the Dark Illusion Assault runes will reduce the Dark Illusion cooldown by 0.5 seconds for each rune. There are 5 runes for this, giving us a total of less 2.5 seconds cooldown. Up next, we have the Defensive Skill Weapon Blocking. This is an active skill that has a percent chance to block all damage when hit by melee attack. This will last for 30 seconds and will drain 4 SP per second while active. At skill level 5, we'll have a 35% chance to block melee attacks. Alright, let's test it out. Here is Reese's continuous damage on Tanch without weapon blocking activated. However, upon activating weapon blocking, we can see that there are pauses on the attack animations as the damage is blocked. Activating the weapon blocking counter slash rune would give weapon blocking a 15% chance to trigger a counter attack using cross impact level 5. There are 4 runes for this giving a 60% chance to counter attack if weapon blocking is successfully triggered. Alright, up next we have Hallucination Walk. This is an active buff which will increase movement speed, flee, critical resistance, and magic damage reduction for 12 seconds at skill level 5. However, the drawback is that as the skill expires, this will decrease agility, attack speed, and movement speed for 6 seconds. Upon trying it out, we can see Tanches improve movement speed upon activating Hallucination Walk. And here we can also demonstrate the movement speed debuff. This can be used when entering portals during WoW to quickly pass through the defense. However, because of the debuff, make sure to quickly hide before the effect wears off. Alright, we can also demonstrate here that Hallucination Walk gives enhanced magic damage reduction. This is a magic damage on Tanch before activating Hallucination Walk and after activating Hallucination Walk. We can see that there is a considerable reduction in the magic damage taken. There are two runes for Hallucination Walk. First, Hallucination Walk Magic Break would add an extra 8% magic reduction when using Hallucination Walk. There are three runes for this which would give us additional 24% magic reduction. Next, Hallucination Walk Shadowless would give extra 6 points of flea and critical resistance. There are 5 runes for this, giving us a total of 30 points additional flea and critical resistance. Moving on to the passive skills, we have Mind Intimidate. This passive will allow Soul Breaker to have a chance to fear enemy units and deal more damage to targets in the fear state. At skill level 10, the percent chance of fear is at 30%, and the percent additional damage is at 30% as well. Upon trying it out, we can demonstrate that Mind Intimidate has a chance to fear the target. Furthermore, we have an increased damage when in the fear state. In this case, the damage has been raised from around 50k to around 70k damage when in the fear state. 
Lastly, for the guilt and cross skills, we have deep and wound. This is a passive skill that would have a percent chance to remove one buff from the target when auto attacks trigger critical or double attack. At skill level 5, would have a 60% chance to remove one buff. As we can see here at the upper left corner of the screen, the deep and wound passive remove all of Kelsey's buffs. Alright, so far we've gone through all our newly unlocked guillotine cross skills. I hope this video was helpful in giving us an idea on how all guillotine cross skills work. Special thanks to my guildmate Tanj for his substantial contribution in the making of this demo. Okay guys, we're already at the home run with our skills demo videos. Make sure to stay tuned for the finale. The last but definitely not the least, the genetic skills demo. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.